Hello, this is Angela Anderson. Thanks for joining me today. We are going to be painting a white rose with acrylic paints. This is a live show. Got my husband Mark with me. Hey there, everybody. And it's also a very special giveaway show for my 50,000 subscriber giveaway. I have some goodies from Windsor & Newton. They sent me from their master class learning tools for artists. Um, they asked me to tell you all about that and that there's a uh, website that you can go to and I'll actually have that link in the description later but we he, they sent me some brushes and some other goodies and we're going to be starting the giveaway after the live show and we'll have all the information about that at the end of the show I'll show you what we're going to be giving away really quick here and then we'll show it again at the end but uh, this is our third prize is these three brushes they're Cotman line. They're kind of a watercolor um, series of Windsor & Newton, but I also use them for um, acrylics. There's a liner, a medium round, and a large flat. And then these ones are their artist acrylic set. Um, so they're made for acrylics. And there's two flats, so kind of a half inch and a quarter inch flat, and then a large or a medium size filbert, and then a small round. So those, this is second prize, and then our big grand prize is going to be this bamboo box. Woo and it's got all kinds of goodies in there, and I'll open it up later, but I don't want to do it right now because <laughs> it's heavy, and I got my stuff in the way here. So um, all the rules for the giveaway are down in the description, and if you're watching this after uh, January 28th, 2017, it's over. So don't enter. <laughs> You'll have one week to get your entries in and uh, then it's done. So <laughs> don't be sending me comments two years from now. <laughs> Please. <laughs> well, at least not for the giveaway. Well, yeah, you, you can, can still comment. comment. Yeah, you can. Anytime. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Just don't be asking where your, your stuff is. <laughs> All right, I'm excited about this one. Uh, this is kind of the third in a sort of series that I've been doing. Um, the large uh, petaled or layered series. So we started out with the poppy. And the colors and everything that we did with the poppy would actually work if you wanted to do a red rose instead of a white rose. So you could go back and watch this video and kind of use these darker uh, reds uh, that we used in the poppy in the rose video. And if you want to, um, instead of doing the like yellows highlights, you could do a little bit more pink if you want your rose to be a little bit more on the pink side. So that's the poppy. Then last, a couple weeks ago, we did the succulent in the colors of the year. And this was another, it was kind of a little bit more detailed layering. And now we're graduating to the rose. And this will be kind of the more complicated of the three, but I think it's totally doable. And if you've done the other two, I think uh, you are set up for doing this one and having some success at it. Um, Really quick, I think I'm just going to, I went ahead and sketched it out because there's so many different uh, layers to it to sketch out. I will have a traceable for you uh, after the show, but I think what I'll do is paint it in as I go and explain how I drew it while I paint it. So I'm going to start with a small round brush. Um, you'll probably want an angle brush if you don't already have one. It'll be helpful for getting in all of these little tight corners when you're blending with the rows. So I'm going to probably be using two angle brushes. This is a 3 8 inch and a quarter inch. And then a couple of round brushes, a number four and a number two. And then we'll probably use a larger either angle or flat brush for the outside. I went ahead and prepped my canvas. This is an 11 by 14 inch canvas. You can use whatever size you have or want to use um, and just scale up accordingly. Um, but this is yellow oxide on the background that I prepped with. If you prepped with black, which is totally fine, what you can do is paint in the rose part with yellow oxide over the top of the black before you put your white. I just feel like that the yellow undertones in the white rose will be easier to work with than the black undertones because you just have so many more layers to have to cover with the black. It's harder to cover 
So, um, yeah, let's get the number two round here. And my palette is pretty limited. Um, the rose is, if you look at it, I've got the example I'll leave up in the corner there. Uh-oh, got some water on it. Um, it's kind of a, a orangey color almost in the center there. It's got an ivory cast to it, so it'll be in the yellow tones. That's why I uh, did the yellow background. But there's also going to be some blues and grays down in these areas, a little bit of green tucked in here. So I decided to go with a uh, yellow, cadmium yellow light. Uh, there's my yellow oxide, the background color. Uh, burnt sienna, because I think that that'll give me a good orange glow. It's, it's not super orange, but it's got that, that little tend towards orange uh, brown color. Uh, ultramarine blue, this is light ultramarine, which is just ultramarine plus white, but that'll be some of the uh, shadow color that we'll use over in this area. So I just went ahead and put it out. But if you don't have this, don't you don't have to run out and buy it. Just mix some white with your ultramarine blue. Uh, titanium white and unbleached titanium, which is another white that's got a little bit of yellow, uh, maybe yellow oxide in it or something. And the background's going to be carbon black, but you can use any color for the background. I think it'd be really pretty on a red background or, you know, blue, any color. I'm just using this black because I, I kind of liked the um, black and white effect. So there you go. All right, let me stop explaining things and start painting here. Sorry. And your reference photo is from where? From Pixabay. Pixabay, okay, that's what I thought. Mm -hmm. I think I put the reference, pick the link in link. the description. Okay. Mm -hmm. Pretty sure I did. So um, if you don't want to use my traceable, you could just print this out and trace it straight from the photo too. So um, let me see what color do I want to, I guess I'll just use white to uh, outline it. Maybe a little bit of, actually let's use the unbleached titanium. That'll be a little bit off though. Well, you might be able to see it better against that white chalk. Okay, so the, when I'm doing a rose, I kind of try to figure out how big the center is going to be compared to the rest of it. And if you look at the photo, it's about, oh, I don't know, a quarter of the size of the rest of the rose. That makes sense. So, um, and it's about just above the halfway mark. So almost on the thirds, if you measured and cut your painting into thirds this way and thirds this way it's just in that kind of center quadrant a little bit under if that's our mark for the third it's kind of right off to the corner there if that makes sense so you just whatever size canvas you're using you just kind of do the same thing and say okay there's my third and my rose is going to be in that section and it's not going to go past the halfway mark so that way you can kind of get the right size. So the first thing I do is just kind of do the little center section in a rough circle. It's not a perfect circle and you don't really want to make it too cartoony, but this is kind of the center of it. Then there's going to be these angled lines coming off the sides that sort of cup the center part and all of these little petals are going to emerge from around the outside and curve out and touch these sections. So I'm going to do a long line that kind of wiggles and comes down here. This rose is actually, I kind of wished I'd picked a little bit simpler picture because this one has a lot of um, folds in it, which makes it a little bit harder to see what you're doing. So there's my center one, and there's going to be a, one that kind of cups the outside of it and comes and wiggles up and around. And then tucks back down into... There, where this kind of center bud ends. 
Okay. Am I going too fast? Does this make sense? Hopefully. Not too fast for me. Not too fast for you. You won't be painting this probably though. So. No, I probably <laughs> won't be. I think my schedule is full that day. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'm not even going to bother uh, painting in all this little uh, stuff that's going on in the inside because we're going to shade this area and then we'll paint over the top of it. So any any area that I'm going to be painting over, I'm not going to really worry about um, right now. So for the drawing, but basically you're going to be um, doing all these little tucked, weird, um, curved lines that sort of curve in on each other like that. But it's going to look really weird right, right now, so don't pay attention to that. Uh, let me see. Okay, so then up here, there's one that kind of comes up and around. And they all kind of build on each other and overlap just a little bit. So you just kind of have to look at your picture and see how they overlap. This one kind of comes in and tucks right down over the top of this. And tucks in right there. This one sort of curves back around on itself. And then gets lost in all this dark stuff that's going on over here. So I'm not going to bother paint, painting that in, but there's this big petal right here. This one right here. That curves out. There's all these little wiggly lines here. And curves back up. And in and then there's this one here that kind of well this is the inside line of it right here so we got to kind of it sort of cups that whole thing here and creates a barrier for this petal that sort of overlaps it a little bit and then it tucks right down into there then this petal curves up and around, wiggles around. Up on top. So you can kind of see it sort of builds from the center and they all sort of radiate. It's almost like a spiral. This one spirals this way. And then this one kind of continues the spiral. This one continues that spiral a little bit farther out. This one spirals inward. Um, so if you just remember that they're all kind of pointing down into the center. So all of these ends here are of the petals are going to kind of be pointing in all of these ones too. Um, where that flower starts. All right. So... We're going to do the petals one by one. Once we get our outline done, that's the really the hardest part. And then the fun part is going to be shading in all of our little sections. And so here's one more big petal that kind of cups around the whole thing. And then this one is going to wiggle around here and go off the edge. Because it kind of gets cut off right here. And this is part two. Then this petal sort of tucks down and back, back around. And goes all the way up this side. And the petals get larger as they unfurl. So the ones that are towards the center are going to be smaller and shorter. Obviously. And then the ones that are farther out are going to be long, big, big petals okay so there's our basic rose shape hope I didn't go over that too fast but like I said you can kind of study your drawing and kind of get an idea it's not too bad but it is a lot more complicated I think than some of the poppy for sure was a lot easier <laughs> a lot easier but I tried to pick a rose that kind of had everything sort of unfurled or sort of stacked toward us so that it it would be a little bit easier to paint, I think, hopefully. So, 
and one with good colors. I really liked the colors in this one. All right, so I'm going to start and I'm just going to paint in this center of the rose. We'll start from the center and work my way out. I'm going to grab the burnt sienna and some white. I want to grab a little bit of the yellow oxide just to make it a little bit more orange. Just trying to get the right tone there. I think that that's pretty close. And we're going to just paint that in here. I might need it a little bit darker. Grab a little bit more of that. And what I'll be looking at is the values now. So my values, my darker values are going to be where um, the petals are tucked in. The lighter values are going to be along the edges where the light's hitting them. So I'm going to darken up this area and then we'll come back in with some of these petals and lighten it all up again but I just want this darker color right here to start with and then I'm gonna wipe that off grab some white and blend down from the edges just a little bit up here so this is this kind of area right in here that I'm painting and it actually extends up this way there's not actually a petal along that back side so I do want to bring it all the way up to that right there and this is a bright petal curving around And you can see I'm not cleaning out my brush, so it's, this white is, is not a clean, perfect white. I'm going to grab a little bit of yellow, the yellow cadmium yellow light. If you don't have the light version, you can use the medium version. Cadmium yellow, let's get a little bit of this yellow in here, too. don't want to lose this petal so this one is going to be curving in like this I want to get that nice and bright right there and then there's actually a little bit dark area right in here underneath it we'll make more sense of this center part while when it dries so don't worry about that too much right now Grab some of the darker color and do some dark right in this crease right here. Let's do the burnt umber on this side. That may be too dark, but we can always lighten it up later. So we'll pull the burnt umber down this way and then wipe that off and grab some of this yellow and put some of this yellow on this side coming up grab some of that yellow oxide too there's not a huge difference in value here so especially like right in here it's going to be pretty dark evenly dark there'll be like a little bit of a dark line right down the center do I need to zoom in a little bit more or is this okay we'll wait for chat to catch up okay it looks good to me nobody has said anything about it okay but I need to be zoomed in there so I feel like that burnt sienna is a little bit dark a little bit uh, not quite the shade I was going for yeah 
And on the dark colors, is that what colors are you using right now? Burnt sienna, a little bit of the yellow oxide, pretty much those two colors. Okay. And maybe a little bit of white to tone it down because that's really too dark on its own. So just getting these kind of reddish tones that are closer to the center and then we'll work in the uh, blues as we get out, and blues and greens as we move out to the outside edges. Okay, we got some votes for zoom in. Okay. But I don't like the people in chat because that means I now I have to pay attention. <laughs> mm. I have uh, this full confession mode. Have not had the chance to actually do this example, so we'll be working this out as we go <laughs> today. <laughs> May take a little bit longer while I figure out the colors mostly. Uh, had a rough week, so <laughs> I've been feeling all that great this week, so we'll just haven't had time to get to it, which it's kind of uh, sad because it's, I like painting roses, but no, that's all right. I'm not going to grab that one. I was going to show the other one, but it's just... All right, so now in here, I think I'm going to actually grab some of this blue and make a gray-green color for down in here. That'll be a good, yeah, that's, so ultramarine blue and the yellow oxide. And I still have some white and different colors on my brush, so it's not a clean, not perfectly clean. I'll grab a little bit of white too. Lighten it up. We'll add that in right here. And then grab some white and pull it down this direction. So as we do each section, we'll just blend as we go. You kind of want you to do your brush strokes in whatever direction that petal is going. So you're going to kind of be pointing it down towards the center of the rose each time. So these these ones would go in this direction. As you come around here, they're going to go straight down. These ones are going to be pulled in this direction. These ones will be pulled down or up, depending on which way we're going. But yeah, I'm liking that color better. That little bit of ultramarine blue helped a lot. I feel like this needs to go down farther, though drawing. There we go. Okay. We have a good audience today? Yeah, we sure do. Good. I mean, the people in chat are okay. <laughs> you know, it's the usual. The usual suspects. Yeah, the usual troublemakers in there. We'll grab some unbleached titanium here. Reinforce this light edge right here um yeah the this video had a lot of likes before we even started this time so i have i was really excited for that yeah we had uh let's see right now there's i see 247 watching nice 288 likes very good so i'm doing something right over here <laughs> you're welcome they're all here for you well, we all know that. Well, they we, they missed out on Stickman on Tuesday because we ran out of time. Uh, true. So now it'll be a do double Stickman. <laughs> oh no! Don't put that pressure on me. <laughs> <laughs> grab some yellow oxide here. I've got I mixed some uh, like a light yellow, but I feel like it's too light. I need the value a little bit darker, so I'm gonna go ahead and grab this yellow oxide there. And if you notice, I'm kind of leaving some of the um, yellow oxide showing through between the gaps here. That just helps me keep my lines while I'm doing this, and then I can go back in with my really bright whites or whatever color that I decide I want um, to use in there. So it's going to look like a mess before it gets better. So you just have to kind of trust the process and don't panic when you get to this stage and you're like, oh my God, this looks awful. 
mine looks awful too. It's just part of the process. Uh, you just kind of have to do these paintings in layers and they come together eventually, but um, you, can't, you can't judge it by the way it looks when you first put on your first layers because it's going to look really weird, especially with these roses. Okay, so we have an art question now. Yes. Somebody's asked, yes. can they make cad yellow? Mm -hmm. uh, the colors they have is they have a medium yellow and a titanium white. Or is cad yellow one of those kind of things that's just there? Yeah, you really can't mix it, but I mean, a medium yellow is probably similar because it's cad yellow medium. So um, cadmium yellow light really can't be mixed be even with cadmium yellow medium it's just a um it's a little bit more vibrant shade so even if you add white to your cadmium yellow medium it won't it won't come out this bright neon color that this is um but cadmium yellow medium would work just fine on you know with this too i think i just wanted it because i was creating a green and this is a little bit more on the green side than the cadmium yellow medium, which is a little bit towards the orange side of the spectrum. So it would create more of an olivey green with cadmium yellow medium with uh, um, ultramarine blue. Sorry, I can't think of the words. My words are not coming to me. Cad, cad yellow medium and ultramarine make a olive green. Um, this one, because it's a little bit more on the green side, will make a little bit, it'll be a little bit more of a brighter green. It will still be on the olive side of this spectrum, but it won't be as olive. So I'm going to put a little bit of this brighter yellow in here. And if you look at our picture, there's really not a whole lot of contrast between these two petals this one almost disappears into this one so I'm going to have to manufacture a little bit of value change or color change there just to make it make more sense visually so this right here is what I'm kind of working on trying to figure out exactly how I want to do that and I think I'll probably just make this a little bit brighter white right here and pop it out a little bit from the one that's behind it just put a little bit of white on my tip of my brush and pull it down. There we go. So now you can see those two a little bit better. Do it all the way around is. I'm not going to be super smooth on my blending today. I think I'm just going to leave it a little bit more on the impressionist side, maybe. Um, so it'll it won't be. Uh, completely smooth blend but if you do want a smooth blend you could just uh, you know work your layers a little bit more carefully all right so as I get out to the outside edges I'm going to add more white and pull that down in and let it blend over my layer here now if this is not blending for you you're gonna have to grab some of that color that was underneath and pull it up the opposite way so which was the yellow oxide with white and just lightly blend those together so pull that out a little bit more from where I drew it It'll start to make a little bit more sense the more you get, the more petals you get in here too. So just kind of take your time with it and keep working these petals in towards the outside. Sometimes I work outside in, sometimes I, I don't know, it just depends on my mood. So it really doesn't, there's no right or wrong way of doing it just as long as you eventually get them all filled in. It's almost like color by paint by number, you know, you're kind of coloring in each little section and just referring to your photo to make sure you're getting kind of your darkest values in there and getting enough depth. So. 
So this one is actually pretty close to this. This sort of comes out here, and then this one cups it in here again. There's not a whole lot of these two petals are sort of blending into each other in the picture. There's actually a petal right there. You can draw it in. Make it easier to see. So that's what I'm painting right now. This and this outside one. Got my brush in my mouth, so <laughs> sorry. A little hard to talk. Don't talk with your mouth full. Sorry. <laughs> I'm going to bring this up now, looking at my picture here. Now that I drew it, I feel like this needs to come up a little higher. Now, my brush, my paint is getting sticky because this is not, it's starting to dry, so I need to not mess with it right now. I'll just keep on moving around the side here, and I can add more shadows and highlights later if I need to. I'm going to grab the unbleached titanium now and work some of that in. It's just kind of a neutral buff tone. Uh, it's actually a good skin tone, but I'm just going to use a variety of warm and cool whites. They're all going to be kind of grays and whites. Okay, it's time to clean out my brush. It's getting a little... little thick there. All right, how are we doing on time? 30 minutes already. Whew, gotta get, we gotta get moving on this. It's gonna take us all day. Okay, so white, there goes my cat again. She's doing this every show. She never comes in my studio, ever, and she's knocking on the door and out there. Every, every time lately, it's so weird. God, what is going on with her? weirdest thing. It's like, I think she hears us talking in here and thinks she wants to get in here with us or something. I don't know. Okay, I'm just going to lilac blend over that edge. You hear it on the mic? Here, knock, knock, knock. I can hear you in there. She's like a three-year-old kid. What are you doing? Okay, so I'm going to do this whole one with white here. I'll probably darken up this corner here, but I'm just going to go ahead and fill it in with white for now. And this one's going to be the one that sort of pops out from this. And it's pretty solid white almost. There's going to be very few petals that are going to be white, you know. And I think that that the way the why why people um, find white roses to be a little bit tricky is because <clears throat> your eyes telling you it's white when it really in reality is a lot of different colors. It's not it's not solid white, and so your your tendency is just to want to go in there with white and paint it in white, and then you you've got a solid white blob and you don't have any depth to it. So the trick is to kind of find the color tones and the subtle um, value changes. This is, needs to be a lot darker. If you look at our picture, I can see now this color here is way too light here. So we'll deepen that up here in a minute. But that's the trick to it is just kind of getting those values and colors in because you can't really use a, you know, a color that's super dark with it like you can with red you can just go in with a you know deep burgundy or something like that well there's not a dark white <laughs> you can pull you know there's just not I mean it's gray or you know gray or like what we're doing you know here with the yellows or these colors so that makes sense but It makes sense to me. Makes sense to you? Mm hmm Okay. Good. 
I'll grab a little bit of this burnt sienna color. I'm not really loving that this is not the color that I was hoping it was turning out to be. I really don't know what would have done better, but... <clears throat> it's just me. I would... It's that perfectionist in me. I wanna. It's gonna work just fine, but you know, I'm thinking what would have been better. Always. All right. So I've already got. Let me see. This one here. I've already got this part of this one. So I'm just gonna continue it right here and connect it. This is the back side of this petal. I'll grab a little bit of white. To, Define that edge. Okay, we have a question asking: okay. um, Can somebody use a slow dry medium to make sure this easier? Okay, yeah, even a glazing medium could work. Um, you know, if you wanted to do these dark sections with a glazing medium, you could do that. You could have painted it white. And then a solid white, and then go in with your glazing medium and glaze these darker sections. I've seen it done where they've they've taken the rose and they've painted it all in grays and black, like white and gray, and then go in and glaze over the top. That's an oil painting technique that um, can't gray. I can't remember the name of the technique, but anyhow, it's. Um, Okay. Well, we have we got a couple other questions popped up here. Okay. Another one asked, uh, "Can you use the yellow oxide?" By the way. Okay. okay. Go ahead. <clears throat> can you use unbleached white in this painting with the other white? Yeah, that's what I'm using here. Okay. The unbleached titanium. Right. Mm -hmm. And yep. then somebody asked if a flat or bright brush would work. It would well. work. It's a little bit more difficult, but if you had a small enough one, it would work. Yes. So. You just have to have one that was small enough to tuck into here. If you don't, uh, you could use your number four round too, you know, or a, or a small round brush to get in these tight sections. It's just a little bit harder with a bright to get these small little corners in sometimes. And I give a uh, shout out to uh, Debbie Thornhill for her donation. We oh. really appreciate donating to the channel. That's awesome. Thank you so much. Have uh, they started that already? The, um, the super chat? Well, yeah. I mean, it just popped up in chat there. Nice. So, yeah. That's cool. I'd heard that they were going to start doing that, but that's... Thank you, Debbie. That's so sweet. And we're going to be starting a Patreon um, account here in the next week or two. So I'll have information about that once I open it up and be sure to put the links on my video descriptions, but I think we'll be offering some kind of perks for those who want to help out the channel. Kind of our thank you back to the people who feel like supporting us. I'm going to put a little bit of bright white right along that edge and connect it right here with that little line there. Okay. I feel like this rose is pretty complicated. <laughs> I hope I'm explaining it well enough. <laughs> I would definitely not choose this as your first time painting project. You might be a little bit frustrated. This is great for somebody who's, like I said, already done the poppy and is ready for another, you know, challenge to get some other blending skills involved. Okay, so this actually goes all the way down in here. That's this. And then this petal here connects up with that. All right, that makes more sense now. So this one comes all the way down and tucks in there. And then this one comes all the way around and tucks in here. It's those little spiral things I was saying. And then this petal sticks out over here. 
Something's drying on me pretty quickly today. I'm going to grab some glazing medium and help me out. Oh, there we go. And uh, somebody asked if uh, basic paint would work just as mm -hmm. well. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yep. Yeah, if you're using Liquitex Basics, they sure, they sure would. And they, uh, they're a little bit more fluid, so they might be easier to blend. I don't know. So I'll grab the glazing medium here and see if that helps me. I think that'll help. Just this uh, golden glazing medium gives you a little bit extra drying time, too. It extends the working time of your acrylic paints. And it also thins them out a little bit so okay we're looking all right I think not too bad I still feel like this probably needs a little bit more of a yellow tone to it so I'm going to go back over here with some yellow oxide and this is a transparent yellow oxide that you can use regular with your glazing medium yeah that's better just to kind of make it a little bit more orange or it's not so red all right, so I need to get my darkest colors down in here. So I'm going to grab this burnt umber, uh, ultramarine blue. I keep wanting to call it burnt umber today. Ultramarine blue, and I'm mixing it with this yellow oxide again. And I still have a little bit of the red on it, so it's going to turn it kind of gray. And we'll tuck in a little bit of this color here, just a little bit. Let me just use my finger to blend that out. And then there'll be a little darkness right here. We're seeing the junction between these two petals there. Grab a little bit of white. Blend that out right there. This is going to be just a little pocket of gray right here and right here. with a little dark line right down the middle. Okay, then this is going to be really dark right in here. So we're going to darken up this whole area where we put this color previously. We're just going to make it a lot darker. It needs to be a darker value than I did it. Here. And the dark stays pretty close to the bottom here. It's not really getting very far up here. This kind of turns light right here. So it's kind of a dark rectangle almost right here. And then it's dark along that corner. So continue that darkness up here a little bit. Grab a little bit of that glazing medium to help it flow. Much better. Glazing medium will actually help you blend it out too a little bit. Uh, when I'm blending it, I'm not, I don't have a lot of paint on my brush. And I'm very lightly just moving it across there. Okay, that's much better, much more dark. You can see that it's closer to the picture value there. I may even have to go shade darker, but we'll see once we get some of the other petals in around it, how it looks. All right, I'm going to clean that off my brush so it doesn't muddy my white. We'll keep on working. These bigger petals will be a lot faster because they're not going to have as much fine detail. So this is the trickiest part here is in these little tight, tight center areas here. I'm going to grab some of my white. And we'll just brighten up this whole section right here. And grab the unbleached titanium too because it's not a solid white right in here. There we go. I'm just going to tap along that edge. And just brighten up that edge just a little bit. There we go. See how that brings it forward and makes it look three-dimensional just by adding that little bit of white along that ridge there. And can you go over one more time how you mixed up that gray? Yes, it's the... Um, Unblue or uh, golly, why? Um, ultramarine blue. I need to just write it on here so I can read it. Ultramarine blue and yellow oxide 
and a teeny tiny bit of the burnt sienna and maybe a little bit of white. So, okay, I'm going to grab. I may, so the ratios are a little bit, little bit, teeny tiny bit. <laughs> Don't make me laugh. Sorry. Uh, okay. Yes. <laughs> we'll make sure they got that out there. <laughs> oh, my gosh. <laughs> it's mostly yellow. Yellow is a very light uh just in general, yellows are have a very low tinting strength. Whoops. Oh, there we go. And so they um, just wipe it off while it's wet. Um, so you need to use more of them than the other colors when you're mixing with them. Otherwise, they just disappear completely. So it's it's probably sixty yellow or or even 80 yellow in one and maybe no even more than that because it's just a teeny tiny bit of that blue so and it's it had some white in it too okay, i'm going to add some yellow down here this is yellow oxide and white i'm just going to yellow up that area right there a little bit and right here blend that gray out just slightly i'm going to keep it dark right there but i'm going to start Work in this petal here, and this is where I do want a little bit more gray or a little bit more green. So, actually, I'm going to use this yellow now with my. I think what happened is I let these paints set for a little bit before the show, and I didn't put them in my baggie, and so they're drying out on me. So, you see how much yellow I have here, and I'm just grabbing a teeny tiny bit of this blue and adding it and it'll make this nice green for us. And then I'm going to add just a little bit of white on one side over here to get a lighter value of it. And then we'll use these two colors to blend in some of these areas in here. And this may be a little bit too bright so I might add just a little bit more of the blue to it. We'll see. So I want this green in here. Ooh, that's really bright. I probably do need to add a little bit. Let me add a little bit of burnt sienna to it. That'll tone it down. There we go. I don't even know what you would call that. That's probably a puke green. Probably something like that. I have experience with that this week. So. <laughs> yeah, so there you go. It's getting it in there. I need a little bit more of the burnt sienna just in that corner, I feel like, maybe. Tuck in a little bit of that just to make it a little bit darker right there. Grab some of my glazing medium so it doesn't dry on me so quickly while I'm blending. There we go. I have the burnt sienna just on the tip of my brush here, so it's actually kind of working and just putting it along that edge of that white, to give it a little tiny bit of a contrast along there. And here I'm going to be pulling my petals out this way and then up this direction. And I'm going to put a little bit of this color in here just to unify the painting. So, you know, when I'm introducing a brand new color over here that it doesn't look like it's coming out of nowhere. Just a little tiny touch of it will help. And it makes it look like it's kind of glowing right here. Put a little bit in here too. There we go. See, it's starting to come along. I'm not minding it as bad now. Let me see. I mean, even as long as I've been painting, there's times when I've get through in a painting and I'm just like, what do I do now? You know, and if you get to that point and you really are super stuck, a lot of times what I'll do is set it out in my living room. Mark can attest to this. <laughs> Many times I will have paintings out in the living room just sitting out there half completed or partially completed. I'm going to grab some of that gray here. 
and uh, just kind of study it for a few days, kind of figure out if there's anything that pops out at you. Usually it'll kind of come to you after a while, sort of where you're off. Sometimes you might be off in a value, like your, you know, lights and darks are a little bit off, or so when I say value, I'm saying not the, not the purchase price, <laughs> but value is just means that how light or dark an area is. Uh, so sometimes I don't have enough contrast in my values, and so it'll make the painting look flat if you don't have enough dark and lights. Um, sometimes it might be the shape. You know, you might have gotten your shapes a little bit off. Um, so there's a lot of different things that it could be. Sometimes it's color, but most of the time the color doesn't matter as much as your value. You could pretty much put any colors in here. As long as you get your darks and lights in, you know, I mean, you could see Andy Warhol or, you know, some of these other artists that worked with neon colors and different things that are not uh, at all in nature. Um, and they get away with it because they've got their lights and darks, the values correct, and they're playing with cool and cool and warm colors like, you know, reds against purples and, you know, reds, reds and oranges and yellows against you know, blues and purples to create dimension as well. So, taking a drink there, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> All right. And then when you put the painting out there and you ask me for my opinion, I know you're really stuck if you're uh, asking yeah. for my help. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> <laughs> yep, yep. Oh, I had a painting last year that, it took me months to get it done. It was a commission for a guy, and he wanted it certain butterflies that were the but the state state butterfly of Arkansas, and he wanted the state flower of Arkansas, which is the oh I can't even remember what the name of the state butterfly was now, but um, anyhow, the state flower was an apple blossom, and the two didn't correspond like you wouldn't see an apple blossom with the butterflies on them because the butterflies come in later in the summer you know later in the year and the apple blossoms bloom first of spring butterflies aren't out yet so basically asking for a photo that of you know painting of a, of something that does not exist in nature so there's no way for me to find a photograph of the two together and um it was a it was a long process. It was probably, if I'd had a photograph, probably could have finished it in, in uh, half the time that it took me to do it because I was having to figure out, you know, com compile two different butterflies from two different pictures and then the, f the flowers from a different picture and moving the stuff around and moving the move the composition around actually is in my blog it was kind of an interesting i i documented the whole thing and took pictures of it it may have been two years now that i'm thinking about it this might have been a little bit longer but anyhow i don't know why i'm saying that except for that i'm using a little bit of this uh, uh burnt sienna plus white today i can't think of my words today i'm having a hard time um Okay, so this felt this petal is tucked all the way down in here over the top. So it's coming in over the top like this. And it's got a nice dark section. I'm gonna have to darken it up right here next to this petal. Um, but just that, you know, I mean it's normal when you're working on, you know, when you're arting and painting to have uh frustrating paintings. A lot of times having a good photo makes all the difference. And just taking your time with it and not forcing it. When, you, when you're kind of stuck, don't keep painting. That's, that's one of the worst things you can do. <laughs> For me, I know from experience, because you can really ruin a painting when you get frustrated. Because uh, you don't have direction, and so you're just kind of kind of winging it and 
when you're upset or you're angry, it comes out on the canvas. You know, it can really affect your the overall look. Okay, so I'm just making sure that I know where I'm at here. Okay, so this petal is coming in here. I'm painting this one now. And it actually tucks back in here. It doesn't look like it. It looks like it continues all the way around here, but it doesn't. There's a little line right here where it tucks back in. So it's coming down in here. And curving around. And it's brighter than this section around it here. So I'm just going to brighten it up right along there. Pop it out. And I think I think that there's a misconception in um, in art, or you know, especially when you first start painting, that um, you're not uh, talented if you don't if it doesn't come easily to you, you know. And that's that's not true, you know. It's doesn't always come easy to, even to the ones to folks who do it for a living, you know. It's it's a uh, process sometimes getting out your thoughts on canvases and your ideas on canvas can be very very frustrating <laughs> and that is normal it's part of the process you're not doing anything wrong and when you're learning a new skill you know if I was learning to play the piano I would not expect myself to go out and be able to play Mozart on my first day out and do it the way that somebody who has been paint you know who's been playing for years and years does it so um, I think somehow in art we think, you know, I don't have talent. Talent equals skill, and that's not, you know, you can learn it. It's, it just takes time and practice. You can't compare yourself to somebody who's been painting for years and years. All right, so I'm losing the contrast between these two petals here. I feel like this needed to be wider, widened here. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna go back in and add a little bit of this burnt sienna between them, just to pop it out a little bit. We well, got a request to zoom out when you have a chance, just so they can kind of get the perspective okay. of everything there. Good idea. Oh, right now that gray is going to look really weird. It's going to look too dark, but if you look at our picture, it's dark. So don't freak out. It'll it'll make sense once we get the other petals in around it. But yeah, I like it so far. Looking pretty good. Stay calm and paint on. Yes, right. <laughs> Stay the course. <laughs> Stay calm and paint on. We need to make t-shirts out of that. I like that. <laughs> You can put that on your Patreon account. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> oh, goodness. Yeah, okay. So I'm liking that. It's not too bad. I actually like seeing it on the camera there. It's sometimes it's easier. And uh, one, of the, one of the tricks that you can try if you're having a trouble with these values and thinking, you know, did I get that dark enough? Is that light enough? Um, what you can do is take um, a photo of what you're working on and filter it on your camera or, you know, on your phone. You, you can do the black and white filters on it after you take a picture and just kind of look at the black and white version. You can usually see if you're off on your dark and light values that way. I'm using unbleached titanium here on this petal. And... That's a good little trick to see kind of what, I'll grab the yellow oxide and get that down in that corner there, right up against that gray, work that out there, and put some along that back side of this one. Okay, so this petal is the inside, it's actually folded out towards us now so we're not seeing the center of it we're just seeing the leading edge of it as it's folded over right here 
So that's what we're doing right here. So it's coming from the center and, and curving up this way now. Grab white, yellow oxide here. Let's pull in colors. I keep forgetting to use my glazing medium too. That'll help make it blend a little bit easier. Okay, so this is yellow oxide plus white here. So it's not super dark because that that this leading edge is pretty bright all along here. It's just a little bit brighter along the edge, but it'll, it's pretty bright here, and then it darkens a little bit right here as we go around the corner. So. Are we following okay so far? That's a yes, apparently. <laughs> what was that? It was Did my phone. phone. Yeah. Obviously, I forgot to put it on mute. I see. You're, you're fired. You're welcome. <laughs> but it was like perfect timing. It was. <laughs> it's like, yes. <laughs> Ding dong. Okay, I'll put some white along this bright, bright edge right here. Just along that edge, I'm just going to scoot it there. Pop it out a little bit more. Okay, so brighter white along this outside edge. Pulling in. I may end up doing the whole painting with this one brush. <laughs> At this rate, it's working out pretty good. I'm, you know, I don't change brushes unless I feel like I'm kind of floundering. But this one has been, it's. I'll probably switch to the smaller one when I do the little details in here because it will be a little bit tight to get these little corners. But I'm gonna go ahead and do this bright white. Pulled it down towards the center. So these are going to kind of curve in this way. And this edge is just a little bit ruffled, so you can kind of play with that and have fun with the uh, edge. Grab some glazing medium, make it a little bit smoother to blend that. And really, I could glaze over, I can show you that. I'll just glaze over that yellow oxide with the white in glaze, and I could just leave it, leave the yellow oxide in places. I wouldn't even have to, I don't even have to put a color. I could just glaze. You can see how that, it's actually really pretty doing that. I'm letting a little bit of that thinner glaze be down towards the darker areas. This is actually going to be a little bit green, though, so I'm going to grab my green. I need to spray it because it's starting to dry. You need to have a spray bottle handy, that's for sure. That's probably one of the best things I ever started doing was using that spray bottle to keep my palette moist. If you don't, uh, if you live in a really humid climate, you may need to get one of those stay wet palettes. I don't particularly like them, but they do because they kind of make my paint soggy, I feel like, because, um, you know, we're pretty humid in our climate, so I don't really need the stay wet palette. Um, so I'm pulling this green from the outside in, or inside out this way. It's creating that glow. I really like that color. Um, so I get I get that comment a lot. You know, people are saying that their paints are drying quickly. And if you spray them pretty often and just keep that film from forming on the top of them, uh, you usually can avoid a lot of issues. But um, if your paints are really drying and you just really can't seem to even the spraying them is not helping what um, I do sometimes is I'll kind of rehydrate them by um, spraying my palette down and then sticking it in my plastic bag I use these foam plates so I put a plate on top and stick it in a plastic bag and the humidity in the bag will re-moisten the paints and soften them back up so 
that way you don't waste any paints, you know, because these are expensive. So you don't want to grab the unbleached titanium and some yellow oxide here. Do that in this shadow area right here. But you definitely don't want to mess with your acrylics while they're drying. That's one of the things that um, will cause issues for you while you're painting with acrylics because they'll lift. Um, if you've got an area, like if I was to go back in right now and paint in this area where it's really starting to dry, this is super sticky right now. And so it's just going to stick to my brush. It's going to lift right off the canvas. It'll cause clumping, cause all kinds of issues. So, you know, it's really important to just let your layers dry. Have a hair dryer if you want to speed things up. Um, poor Mark's not getting to use his hair dryer today. Sorry, honey. I'm just sulking over here. I know. I'm kind I of do, depressed. I still love you. Mm -hmm. I just don't feel like I'm part of the show. I don't need you today, though. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> He's my official hair dryer guy. Actually, I got that curve a little bit too sharp right there, so I'm going to grab some of that green and bring that around this way. There we go. So... Oh, this is pretty pretty good liking it I always like it when I something comes together <laughs> for me <laughs> especially when I'm painting live <laughs> like so what are you gonna say oh no this sucks over. I know exactly I sure hope you paint this because I, I hate it exactly <laughs> <laughs> uh, don't do this whatever you do yeah. don't do it the way I'm showing you that's for sure <laughs> Way to promote yourself there, honey. I know, I know. I am. I'm good at that. I'm going to grab some more of the yellow oxide. I'm out of it. Yeah. Hell, we're just lucky I'm here today. That's all I have to say <laughs> about that. You're just lucky I got out of bed today. Yeah. <laughs> it's been that kind of week. <laughs> Somebody asked if uh, putting the paint, once it's in the bag, mm -hmm. uh, in the refrigerator, does that help any by cooling it, or does it not really matter? I don't know. The temperature matters a whole lot. I don't know. I wouldn't That's think a good so. good question. I don't think so. I really don't, because it's yeah. really all about the moisture, not really the temperature. Right, because the paints, you know, normally you, you don't refrigerate the tubes of paint. Right. So that's a perf completely unprofessional guess on my part. So don't take may my or advice. May or may not be true. May or may not be true. <laughs> don't put them in the oven or microwave. We do know that for a fact. Yes. Pretty much. Well, not from experience, but just thinking it wouldn't go well. Probably not. No. Okay. <laughs> this area here has got a really dark line along here. So I'm going to grab some of that gray. Whoops, I turned my cap thing around. Um, I actually think I want to start using this blue a little bit more heavily as I get towards this outside edge. So I'm going to mix up another color with this blue and the unbleached titanium and make it kind of a gray blue. Let me see. I add just a little tiny bit of yellow oxide. See what that does. All right, somebody put a big word in chat yes. here so okay bear with me what are we they asked if uh this would work using the grizz eye method yeah that's the that's the name of that thing that i was i was trying to remember that's yeah. that oil painting technique or you know old technique where you paint everything in gray and white and then yes and then you glaze over the top oh, of the okay. color okay yeah it would totally work i think um in that case you know i would just use your yellows and yellow oxide as some of your glazing colors this color a little bit of blue you know pretty much the same way we're doing it uh you won't need as much though of the of the glaze over the top since it's white you know as long as you get your gray values in right i i don't particularly i with acrylics i don't know if i like it as uh much because even though you're glazing over it, you're still you still have that gray tone. So when you even when you've got a value like this where it's a little bit different, 
you're not I'm not using any gray here I'm just using the color and I don't know that it would be as um, soft looking I guess is that the word I don't know so but it'd be interesting to try it and see okay then a uh, question came in asking as you get to the outer leaves would a fan brush work a fan blender brush or are you going to stick with the brush that you're using i'm going to stick with the brush that i'm using yeah okay i've never used a fan blender brush i don't even know what that looks like i mean i've got a fan brush but yeah we have a blender <laughs> i'm going to grab some of this green here and, and she completely green. ignored that one <laughs> Add it to my blue gray color. Here. La la la! I don't oh, hear no, Mark. No, I'm just, I'm just working. <laughs> I'm just gonna keep on working. Um, keep on swimming, swimming, swimming. I'm just doing my Dory thing right here. Adding a little bit of the blending medium to blend that out. Glazing medium, I mean. Okay, yeah, liking that. So I went from that kind of gray blue to the green. Add a little bit of that over here too, just to reinforce that. We're getting there. Let's see, I think that that's dark enough. Let me grab some of the unbleached titanium here and just blend that over just to give it a good. blend into the other petal. There are veins in this, these roses too. So, I mean, if you wanted to get really detailed, you could, you could get in here with a liner brush and do some veining. I don't think I'm going to do that today because it just, it would take too much time, but I think that that would be kind of a cool addition if you wanted to or you could even just use your your brush here and kind of use the edge of it to sort of put in some little streaks and if you wanted to okay uh, somebody has a question and i know we've had these questions in the past mm -hmm. uh, but you know we always get new people joining us right the question is um they're moving up from less ex or less expensive paints to right. the liquid Tex basics Right. But they just don't seem to be going as far as your paints are going. Well, um, the the basics are a um, they're a student quality, so they're one step up from your you know craft acrylics, but they're still not um, as pigmented and uh, as the heavy body professional colors. So. Um, that's pretty normal, I think, that they might not uh, go quite as far. I'm going to grab some yellow oxide and blend back up for this. I've got it a little bit too bright right there. Um, and I think that, uh, yeah, I think, I think, well, the... The heavy body colors just have more pigment to them, and I think that that's kind of what it is, why they go a little bit farther. Um, and they're because they're thicker, they kind of cover a little bit better, blend just a little bit better too, in my opinion. So, um, you know, they're... But the, you can do pretty much some of the most, most of the same stuff with the basics. Okay, I'm going to grab this blue. This was the ultramarine blue plus yellow oxide color. I'm going to add that right in here. There's a little, a little dark shadow right here on this petal that's underneath. And then grab some white and just blend, blend that over very, very lightly right here barely touching it. This is actually kind of curving in around, so when I pull my brush strokes, I'm going to pull them around. That's kind of turning a little bit blue, so I want to 
Maybe grab some of my yellow oxide with my white here. There we go. And I've already put in that green color with the little burnt, um, burnt sienna along that edge there. So I'm just going to carefully blend over it and try not to cover too much of it. I'm just going to kind of pull down and almost dry brush over the top of that border there. If I need to, I can grab some of that green and put it back over here. There we go. We're getting there. How long? One hour? So we're not doing too bad, actually. I figured this would be about a two-hour project. So, oh, so it's a quick one today. <laughs> Smart Alec. Need some more glazing medium here. These paintings take time. That's just all there is to it when you're doing this much detail. They just take a little bit of time. It's definitely not a, this is definitely a one that, you know, is, uh, I would consider a fine art type painting. You know, this is not a paint party painting at, in any way. So this is not one that you'll sit down and get done in two hours with a class full of people drinking wine. <laughs> that you, ain't happening. <laughs> you could. Uh, you could try it. The outer parts of your rose may not be as <laughs> yeah. good looking as the inner parts, but yeah, you really wouldn't care, I guess. By that point, you're not gonna. Yeah, you're not gonna. You're gonna be feeling no pain. We'll need to open another box of wine. <laughs> Grabbing the glazing medium, helping that kind of blend in. I'm going to grab this blue color, and as I get around this corner, it's going to get more blue. So I'm going to use this blue right up against the edge here, and I might even grab some of this this color. This was the ultramarine blue plus white. Just a little, a little bit of that in here. I have a little bit of glazing medium on my brush, so it's softening up the color just a little bit. And I still have all these other colors in there, so it's sort of mixing it. I really don't clean up my brush very often unless I really need a bright, bright white. But for this one, we're doing so many tones on tones of similar colors that it really doesn't have to be cleaned out. And in fact, it kind of, I think, helps when you press down and you get some of these other colors that you've used over here in different areas, it kind of helps unify it. All right, I'm going to grab the yellow oxide with the whites. We'll add a little bit of that over here. Might be a little bit darker, so I'm going to grab some of the straight yellow oxide some of that up. There we go. It's going to blend with that blue and sort of make it green. And I'm just kind of paying attention to the direction of my brush strokes now because these are going to kind of curve in. They're all going to almost like a spoke. Really bright along, bright white along the edge there. Pull down. Grab some glazing medium, help it flow. The glazing medium will thin your paint though, so uh, you know, when I'm wanting this bright, bright white along the top edge, I don't want too much of the glazing medium in there. Or it can dilute, dilute my white, make it see through, which I want it to be pretty bright along that top edge there. So. Grab some of that yellow oxide color, 
mix with the white there. Grab a little bit of the blue, light blue mixture. I don't know that I'm showing my palette as very often. Do I need to be showing my palette better? I feel like I've been off camera a little bit with the palette. This is the light blue color. I really like the look of this with the yellows. It's just something about this violet blue, the light blue violet. Even though it's not a prominent color in there, I'm making it a little bit more prominent in my paintings just for artistic reasons because I like it. <laughs> so. And because I think it adds to that cool, warm, cool effect that kind of gives it a little bit more something extra. Okay, I'm still working our way around. It's our whites. This is where this one kind of meets this other petal. So we're going to have to do a little bit of contrast right here because there's not a whole lot in the picture. Thank you. I'm adding some glazing medium just to kind of pull it down. And then let's see, we'll just go ahead and do this yellow oxide right here and come along that edge pull it back up into my wet paint and these value differences here are not as drastic as they are in the center so I don't have to go quite as dark with these but I still do want a little bit of contrast here so I want to be sure that I've got it dark enough with my yellows and blues or whatever I'm using okay let's get a little bit of that blue right in this tucked in right here Okay, somebody asked, and I know you talked about it, and I'll confess I wasn't paying that much attention at the beginning. Okay. Um, the reason for choosing the yellow for the background. Because um, I felt like it would be a good underglow, and the yellow oxide is just a good base color for a lot of other colors. It's, it's one of my go-to undercoat colors. Like if, I, you know, if I'm just kind of stuck and I'm like, I don't really know what would look good under this. Yellow oxide looks good under pretty much anything. Um, and it gives, it's actually a color that was used by a lot of masters like Rembrandt and different ones because um, it creates a glow under your paint colors. And so, especially under this yellow or since under the white, since the, the um, rose is ivory toned, you know, um, the having this yellow oxide around it and peeking through in places. Um, even though we're covering it up mostly, it's still gonna peek through in places and uh, create a little bit of a glow that you wouldn't normally get if you just did it on a white canvas. You wouldn't have that glow underneath. Plus it helps, especially with this white, just to be able to see what you're doing, I think. You know, having that yellow underneath. If you were going on top of a white canvas, you wouldn't almost, be able to see where you've painted, you know. Um, so that's why long version, but it's really good color for for landscapes too. A lot of times, I I'll start out a landscape with this color, and then do my blue skies and something about the yellow oxide underneath with the blue on top. Um, really creates a really interesting color combination. Doesn't turn your gray, sky gray or green like you might think. Uh, it's just, that's a woodpecker. It's a woodpecker picking at our 
roof. God, what's with the animals today? <laughs> That's hilarious. Can you hear it on camera? Yeah, we could hear it. <laughs> the woodpecker's knocking at the door. That's so funny. Hopefully he's not pecking on the siding. I think he's just probably trying to... Well, fortunately, it's a brick house, so... True. It doesn't do much to it. <laughs> <laughs> True. <laughs> Unless he's getting the your gutters. Might be poking a hole which, in your gutters. Which are aluminum, so again... True. True, okay. Not the brightest woodpecker in the woods. <laughs> <laughs> Are you going to outline this in the rest of the background black after this, or are you just going to yes. leave it? You are. Yes. Ooh, boy. I remember you doing that with the poppy. Why? Oh, just people just were on edge. No, people were on edge as you were painting around carefully around the edge. Oh, you know, so. that's the fun part. Yeah. Okay, your definition of fun's a little bit different than mine, but... <laughs> <clears throat> to get you painting with me sometime one of these days well, well we get another camera set up there we go i might give it a go that would be awesome yeah i thought about it i wish our studio was bigger it'd be fun to have people come in and paint with me on camera if we had another one set up Okay, last two petals. Woo uh, let's do this one first. So I'm going to start up over here. This one has a little bit of yellowish tinge to it. I'm going to grab some of that, actually get that yellow oxide or cadmium yellow light and mix it with my unbleached titanium there. We'll do this one in. Okay. Pull it down. Get a little bit of that green color and use a little bit of that as our shadow with some yellow oxide too. There we go. My paints are definitely getting sticky. After two hours of painting, it's pretty normal, I think. <laughs> Anyways, you know, at some point, you sometimes you just have to stop and put out fresh paint. It's just no way around it. And I'll put a little bitty white on my brush and just poke a little bit of white at the very tip here. Pull it in. And you can see I'm just using very light brush strokes and kind of pulling in the direction that I want it to blend. But this is starting to dry, so it's getting sticky. I can't really blend it a whole lot right now. I have to just let it wait. Come back to it. See, it's stuck to my finger. Right there. Okay, stopping, stopping, stopping. Don't mess with it. It's tempting. You really want to because you're like, oh, it just needs one more little blend right there. Nope, don't do it. Move away. Let it dry. Come back. Somebody's asked, uh, what would you add to the paint to get the outside petals to be a little more transparent? Um, yeah, you could use the glazing medium for sure. Um, here, I'll do one like that. Just use glazing medium with my whatever color it is and just or you could even use a you could use a uh, zinc white instead of your trans titanium white which is a transparent white um, I don't know if you can see that but it's got that kind of a luminosity there but uh, I'm going to keep these about the same as the inside ones were, so I'm going to go over this with my the 
acre paint. And this area, I pulled this petal out a little bit farther than it is in the picture just because I wanted it to be bounced and fill up the canvas a little bit more. So if you're wondering why it doesn't quite match, that's why. If you see on the picture, it's probably closer, you know, in here. But just taking a little bit artistic liberties here with it. And we'll use this blue again, this ultramarine blue, light ultramarine. Sometimes it's called light blue violet. Some brands, yellow oxide with it. It's a pretty color. To blend out. And it's still a white, it's just got a little bit of a tint to it. And that's kind of what we're, the whole idea. Okay. This whole area, I think I'm going to do the blue just like I did here, kind of variations of blue and green. How are we doing on time? An hour and 30? That's not bad. Time is still moving as usual. <laughs> Oops, I'm off camera there, sorry. Let me turn this a little bit. I feel like I'm going to be able to get my corner in there a little bit easier to put, turn it upside down. Sorry. Okay, and this is actually a little bit... Oh, well, now I can't even tell where I'm at on my picture, though. Yeah. That's a bad idea. Turn the picture upside down. I do, I need to. Hold on. I'm just going to get this in I think this value needs to be a little bit darker in here. Yeah, it does. It needs to be quite a bit darker right through here. So I'll grab, I'll make some of that gray again that I made before over here. The ultramarine blue and yellow oxide. It's pretty much what just a darker version of what I was using already. I'm just going to darken up these little areas in here. Get some glazing medium, make that flow a little bit better for me. There we go. Question asked if uh, you can use a buff white instead of unbleached titanium yeah buff white is the um is the um golden version of the unbleached titanium so it's this, it's basically the same i don't i think it's a little bit less opaque that's why i'd like to use the um tit the liquitex version personally i have both colors but um but the yeah they're basically the same same thing Zoom out. Okay. Pull it around. Now they got that corner in there. We're getting there. Slowly but surely. Okay. Too much blue. Too much blue. Pull back. Grab some more white there. Grab some more white up here. Pull it in. comes to kind of a point right there. You're kind of quiet today, honey. Well, there's lots of people in chat, so I'm just trying to keep up, make sure I'm not missing any questions. Mm -hmm, good. You know, I read slow. <laughs> so. Yeah, Mark's not the reader. He doesn't not... He thinks I'm weird for reading books, like for fun yeah and, and not even for school i mean that's kind of weird i know it's like if why would you do that if you don't have to 
Right. And that's one of the best things about being an adult. You don't have to read anymore. <laughs> what did I do with you? <laughs> Yeah, I'm going to add a little bit of that bright blue right in here. Brighten up that shadow right there. I'm liking this. If this is too blue for you, you can just continue using these yellows instead. You know, if you don't like the blue, that's perfectly fine. Just get the values dark enough. So, you know, you just want your values to work out. But if you don't want your rose to have that blue tinge to it, you don't have to do it exactly the same as I'm doing it. Grab that unbleached titanium to mix those in. Grab my glazing medium. Get those to blend. These are definitely not wanting to blend today. <laughs> they are fighting me. My, my paint colors are drying. It may just be particularly dry today and our it's not it's not very humid out today I don't think here Mark's not even listening Son about paint <laughs> right <laughs> 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 Talking to myself. I won't tell anybody that that's not different than usual. That's <laughs> 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 very true. <laughs> I once said sorry to a flower when I <laughs> stepped on it. <laughs> like it could hear me. <laughs> so, yeah, guilty. Guilty. People in here are saying that your know, rose is looking awesome. Good. Stunning. Gorgeous. Awesome. Very good. Thank you. And you got a couple thumbs up too. Awesome. I can't wait to get to the giveaway. I know they're just all like <laughs> waiting for that part. They're like, I don't even rose blah blah blah. What's what are we getting? <laughs> Let's give us the goods. I'm trying. I'm, I'm trying the fastest I can. Let's put a little bit of this green over here on this side since we got it on that side. Get a little bit of that green in. Yeah, this is definitely the point where I would be taking these paints and putting them in a plastic baggie to rehydrate. They are not wanting to work with me right now. They are drying really fast. Okay, let me spray one more time here. Because at some point, if you don't keep them hydrated enough, they'll just form a film and then they'll, they'll start drying underneath and the water will just set up on top of the film and it won't actually penetrate down and and uh, moisturize the paint underneath and so it'll continue to dry even if you spray it so we're looking good i think i feel like it needs to be a little bit darker still and our values are a little bit light over here so i'll i'm gonna deepen up this but i think it's still wet so i'm gonna let that dry now and do this petal and then i'll come back and do that little section there. And I feel like I need to clean up that still. So I'm gonna clean out my brush real fast. All right. So this last petal is pretty dark. It's not, it doesn't have these really bright white values. Uh, so we'll use the blues again on it. Get that 
feel that, that light blue color. It's kind of mixing a little bit with the unbleached titanium. Grab the yellow oxide and unbleached titanium and use that to blend in with it. Maybe a little bit more. There we go. So now that we're getting close to the end here, I don't know, should we uh, go over the rules of the giveaway yet? Or no, I guess we're we're not that close yet. <laughs> we've we've still got because I still have to do the center of it. Now that I think about it, we're not that close. We're close, but not that close. All right. So this is darker than this value. So I need to darken this up quite a bit more. So we'll grab a little bit more than my blue. Maybe grab a little bit of burnt sienna and see what those two do together. That'll make a nice dark gray. There we go. Just add that along that. Pull it out as I go. And this may be that you have to come back a couple times to get these blends out and that's normal so don't don't worry about it too much if you're if it doesn't work the first time you may have to come back and do it darker or lighter way. Okay, so that did that. Let's do grab a little bit more of the burnt sienna <coughs> in here. And we'll do this line right here. This needs to be dark right here. Darken it there, especially right here. See that I popped it out a little bit. We'll do a little bit under here too, just slightly. There, a little bit right here. Now that we're getting these other colors in here, I can see where it needs a little bit darker color. So I can come back in and just touch up a little bit with the edge of my brush here. There we go. Okay. Let's get nice and dark right in here. Let's grab some more burnt sienna. Get some of that in there. And then that blue along this edge here. The value kind of gets lighter up here, so you don't have to go quite as dark close to the edge of the petal. So I'll grab some of the lighter blue violet. And then we'll use that to kind of blend in.
wipe my brush off and then grab a little bit of the glazing medium and I'm going to go back over this edge where these two are meeting and kind of try to blend these out. Now it only works if these are still wet so don't try to do this if they're starting to dry but these are still wet enough. And if you go over the dark too much you can always go back in and add a little bit more of that later. I may have covered up too much of it. That really dark color. Grab a little bit more of the darker. Come back in the opposite direction with it. There we go. See that? All right, so there's a highlight right here along this one, so I'm going to grab some of the white and do the highlight pulled in from this outer edge. Grab a little bit of the unbleached titanium and use that too to blend it into the rest. It makes it look like it's popping forward. Anywhere you're using that lighter color like that, it just automatically makes it brings it forward to the eye. bit unbleached titanium with my white here. Keep my directional brush strokes going in the right direction. So they're all pointing to the center right here. So as I go, come up around here, the tendency is to want to come up this way, but you're going to want to keep it curved as you come up around this corner turn your brush so that your petals are growing in the right direction. Get a little bit of this blue here. There's like a blue shadow comes out right there. It's actually kind of dark so I'm going to grab a little bit of this darker. A little bit of the white. Oh, it's done with this part. Doing okay, hun? I'm hanging in there. Mark's taking his Saturday. To help us out. He's a good sport. He works all week and then he works with me on Saturdays <laughs> too. <laughs> I could not do it without him. Oh, I enjoy it. Good. It is fun for sure. Good. Even though he's not a big, huge art, you know, dude. He's gotten better at it though. He. I've dragged him along to enough art exhibits now. He's kind of, I think he could roll with the best of them. <laughs> he could spout some names. He knows, he knows art. Oh, yeah. You know, I've seen a few paintings. <laughs> Just a few. Yes, we've been fortunate to be able to go to some of the larger galleries that has been and so yeah when we went to chicago a couple of years ago i did not realize that the chicago museum was so amazing it had some of the most iconic paintings like the the guy and his wife holding the pitchfork um uh, american gothic yep see see Come on. you even remembered it come on get you? with it would you yep who, who painted it, though? A guy. <laughs> I can't think of a name either. 
I thought maybe you knew. <laughs> okay, let me grab some of this brighter yellow. I feel like we don't want to get a little bit of that in here. I'm sure somebody in chat will know. They can look it up for us. I want to say Hooper, but I don't think that's right. So you got to make me Google it, huh? Google it, Google it. It's going to bug me. All right, hold on here. Uh, I'm going to click bring here. that out a little bit more. Google. I know you're going to have to use your fingers for this. Sorry. Every time I have to Google something, I think of my great aunt, Marge, because she used to call bars before there was Google. <laughs> She needed to know something. Grant Wood. Wood. Okay. Wasn't even close. That's according to Wikipedia. So okay. if you can believe that. It's probably true. All right. A little bit of bright yellow white there. A little bit of bright white on the other side. That'll make it look like it's folded up toward us. A little bit of bright white right here. It's starting to stick, so I need to be careful here. All right, let's do the center. Oh, it's going to blend out this area here. It's a little bit messy. Let's grab a little bit of yellow oxide. Pull it out this way. And then a little bit of the white with a little bit of the yellow. And pull it back in this direction. There we go. Just soften that blend up a little bit. I just stuck my paint in my hand in the paint, her arm in the paint again. I gotta do that at least once a show, or it's not a good show. I have to. I'd like to say that that's something that only happens when I'm doing painting on the air, but it's not true. I, that's why I have designated painting clothes. I cannot wear my good clothes when I paint. I just can't do it. I've ruined too many shirts, pants, dropping brushes, you name it, splattering. You just, it just doesn't matter. The Julia Childs of painting is such a klutz. And you say I'm a messy cooker. You are a messy cooker. Oh mm -hmm. my gosh. So you can't say anything about True. being messy. Uh, no, I am messy. Mm -hmm. Well, I think my hands are fairly clean. Well, maybe not. <laughs> <laughs> Mark pinches salt up like about two feet from where it needs to go. And he just does like this thing where he pinches it and just goes everywhere but where he wants it. Have you never watched the professionals on TV? That's how they do it. <sighs> and it tastes better when they do it that way. <laughs> Duh. I was watching him like, what are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> hey, I got cooking down, so. You are a good cook. I do not complain. You, We both come a long way <laughs> <laughs> macaroni and cheese and spam when we first were married. Hamburger helper. Yeah. Although hamburger helper is pretty good stuff, I have to say. <clears throat> it's pretty tasty. Okay, I'm going to grab some of the green, mix it with some white. I'm going to add it over here just for a little bit of that color over here. It's too bright. Okay. Back away. Grab some glazing medium. Some of that blue. Go back over that. It's just a little bit too bright right there. Okay, there we go. Alright, I'm pretty happy with this, I think, for the most part. I think the values are pretty decent. Somebody's uh, saying there's there's a drip of water where on the top pedal. There it is. Okay, thank you. 
Fortunately, that was dry underneath there. It could lift off my color underneath, but... We would have had to start all over again. <laughs> Grab the white and just do a really bright white along that top edge here. Really make it pop out at me. All right. Yeah, this is more green down in here. Now that I'm looking at my thing, I need to make a little bit of that dark green color. Grab that glazing medium with it. Make this a little bit more green than blue right here, just in this little area. Okay. I'm going to use a little bit of it up here, too. Maybe a little bit over here. Okay, I'm going to let that dry. I may need to go back over it with a little bit of white if it looks too green when I get my background in and all my highlights in. But I'm going to switch to my number, my quarter inch uh, flat now. And we'll put in our petals that are in the center here. So this one curved around here and kind of ends then there's one that's sort of in here that curves in like that and these all kind of come in this one has some grab some of that yellow oxide mixture this one blends out right here, kind of comes, you see the back side of it a little bit. This one too, no, this, sorry, this one goes this way. This one comes like that, around here, and then there's another one tucked in here from right here. It curves around the hair. And it blends out down into that darker area right here. Keep it dark. I need to make sure I'm keeping it dark right there. Okay. Let me zoom in. I feel like I'm too far away. Honestly, this petal has this has got so much little detail going on it. You could probably simplify this quite a bit and just um, I'm gonna use white and I'm gonna back I'm gonna double load my brush here. I'm gonna use white on the tip and the darker color on the back side here. And so we'll do one petal that kind of comes in like this. We'll do another petal that curves in like this. This one kind of comes up like that. Some of these that are sticking straight up at us, we're only seeing the very top of it, so we're not seeing a lot of the blending. It's going to just be almost like a line. But then a few of these are going to have some blended edges like this one did. Brighten up that top. I feel like I want to bring this around even though it's not in the picture. 
just feel like it will help nestle that in if it's closed up right there. Okay, then there's some really dark right in here. Grab this really dark. Grab the black, blue and mix a really, really dark color. And there is right in here. Something right there. Don't little petals tucked in right there. This kind of comes around. Grab some more white. And there's a petal that comes is curving like this. Okay, so you can kind of see it's like a almost like a spiral. You see there, 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 and these are coming around like that. All right, I'm going to clean them up a little bit, define them a little bit better with some white highlights. So this one. I made a question a little bit ago mm -hmm. asking, uh, how do you know how to mix the different colors? Is it just through experience or do you just play with it or? Yeah, I kind of try to see the, um, it's, it is sort of a experience of knowing, okay, you know, uh, a lot of it has to do with the knowing your colors, knowing your paint colors that you're using and knowing how they're going to react to one another. So a lot of times it's good um, to, when you're, you know, not, not painting, just take your colors and your notebook Make, take all your paint colors in your notebook and blend different combinations and just kind of play with them and see what they do when you blend them because one red is not going to blend the same as another red. There's there's reds that are warmer than others and blues that are cooler, you know, and warmer. And so they'll all react differently with different colors depending on, you know, blue, red, Blue, red, yellow are your primaries, but they 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 don't not all of them are the same. So you really do need to kind of practice a little bit and kind of know your your thalo blue is more green, your ultramarine blue is more purple, and when you mix them with reds, you're going to get a better purple with depending on the red you use. If you use a purpley red. With your purpley blue, ultramarine blue, you're going to get a better, more rich purple than if you mixed it with your thalo blue. If that makes sense, I don't know. I'm making a long story short and a long, longer than it needs to be. Sorry, but so yeah, a lot of it has to do with with experience, and a lot of it just has to do with kind of knowing your colors and knowing their base tones and how they're going to react to one another. All right, let's get a little tiny bit of yellow in there. Get the yellow, bright yellow. So we can use some bright yellow highlights in. I'm not 100% happy with this petal here, so. Actually, it's curving down, that's why it's bugging me right here. This is dark right there. And these are actually darker than I did them. I'm fussing now. I need to stop fussing. Sorry. Okay. Good enough. I need to, I do need darker in there though. This center is still not quite dark enough. There we go. And a little bit right here, a little bit the really dark. See how that makes it really deep, feel really deep right there? Just that really, really dark down in there. 
Okay. I'm going to use that really dark, just a little bit of it, and float some. Floating is when you take your brush and you just use water and you dip the tip. You're not on. Oh, right here. So I'm just going to load the tip of my brush, wipe off the back end so that the dark is only on the very tip of it. And I'm going to use that color to get down in my darkest areas right here. And just run that line down in there. A little bit along here. I feel like I could use a little darkness right there. The more water you let happen, the lighter it'll be. So down here, I've got a little bit more water on my brush. There we go. Get it dark, nice and dark right in here. A little bit more. That was ultramarine blue and burnt sienna almost straight. It's making a nice dark, deep dark color. And I've only got it loaded on the tip, so it's I can lay that tip right in the corner there. Okay. Zoom out. Ooh. Pretty. Very Is colorful looking. Somebody asked in the chat if uh, you would recommend them doing a color chart in order to help them learn the different colors. Yes. Um, yeah, a color chart or um, a notebook. I have, um, I have a video on how to do a color chart with your paint mixing. A paint mixing video so um, and you just basically take all of the colors in your in your uh, adding an unbleached titanium here just to soften that up felt like it was a little bit too dark right there um, you just take all the colors that you have and you make a chart and you mix them with each other and fill them in in the chart and that way you can kind of see it's a little bit like, uh, I don't know if I can reach it. I probably can't. Never mind. It's, if you get a minute, there's a chart over there that I want to reach. I'm taped in. Mark, you're not listening to me. No. I need a chart. It's over there. <laughs> He's got me taped into my chair so my mic doesn't rub against anything. No, not that one. It's got squares and... Okay. I'll find it. Okay. It may not, it may be on the other side, but I think it's right in there. I'll find it. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I like that. It's pretty good. Uh, I think my values are all right. So let's start, uh, I'm going to switch to a little bit larger angle brush. And, uh, it should be in there somewhere. I some oh gosh, I'm going to move everything to find it. This is scary. This one? Yep. That. So this is a you know one you can buy called Magic Palette. I don't particularly like the colors they use though, because so I have different colors. So, um, but you know the idea is just Payne's gray or ivory black plus. Uh, Academy Yellow Light makes this color, you know, and you just kind of match up the squares to figure out where, how they blend. So, all right, so let's do the background really quick. And we can get done with this. Oh, we're already at two and a half, almost two, two, fifteen. Sorry. Okay, so while I'm doing this, Mark, you can explain the sweepstakes details. You can read the rules off to them because I don't have them in front of me. All right. So for the giveaway, for the Windsor and Newton stuff, for the brushes. Um, and, so, the, and the box. And, and the paint kit. Uh, first, you know, you need to like, give a thumbs up. And then after this video, after the live today, the video will be posted permanently on YouTube. And there you can leave a comment. And 
Okay, I just need to read. Yes, just read it. <laughs> I'm ad libbing. I'm sorry. Don't. <laughs> <laughs> so, in the comment, make sure you indicate your address. Uh, is from the contiguous United States for all states except for Alaska and Hawaii or international. Your comment does not indicate your location. You will be entered in the second and third prize international sweepstakes. It will not be eligible for the contiguous okay, U.S. grand that prize. Make any sense? I'm just reading it. I know. Well, okay. So basically, we can't ship the paints internationally. Right. So, so the grand prize with the box yeah. is going to be only for the U.S., not including Hawaii and Alaska. Correct. So you'll have to mention in the comments whether you live. Where you live. In order where to your address eligible. is from. Right. You don't have to, you know, give us details, but just say contiguous U.S. or international. Right. And that way we know which one to enter you into because you can win the brushes international, but not the box. Correct. Okay, continue. So all of the comments and entries will be uh, till after the show until next Saturday, January 28th, 2017. You have to mention the date first that it starts to. You have to mention the whole. Just it read starts it. today, January 21st, 2017. Right. Yes. It will end at 10 a.m. Central Standard Time on Saturday. January 28th, 2017. Yes. Winners will be chosen using an online random comment picker and announced during the 2 p.m. Central Time live show on this channel on January 28th, 2017. And the winners will be notified by YouTube message and must reply within 72 hours or a new random winner will be picked. You don't have to be watching to win. Correct. Grand prize winner must provide a shipping address within... The contiguous United States, a prize will be forfeited and a new winner will be picked. YouTube is not a sponsor of this contest and users are required to release YouTube from any and all liability related to the contest. Contestants' private information will not be sold or used for anything other than picking a winner and shipping prizes. Entries that do not comply with YouTube community guidelines will be disqualified. And Angela Anderson and Windsor Newton are not responsible in any way for prizes that are damaged, lost, or stolen during transit. No purchase necessary, and you do not have to be watching the live show to win. You must be 18 and older and a subscriber also. I don't know if we mentioned that. Okay. And so, again, the grand prize is a box set, which we'll be showing here at the end of the painting. And then there's a second prize and a third prize, which are uh, groups of brushes from Windsor Newton. And all other people will just be visited in their dreams by Stickman. <laughs> That's the best we can do. So All non-winners. That's a little scary. Well, well but they might be the real winners. <laughs> oh, Lordy. Good so again, man. the live show right now, as it's going on, the comments will not be kept. Right, they don't, they're not saved by YouTube, so we can't use them in the contest. Right, so once this video is over, it usually takes about 10, 15, up 20 minutes or so for the video to render, and then it'll be posted permanently on YouTube. At that point, the comments there will be used to select the winners from. Right, right. Yes, and you can make whatever comments you like. Uh, when I was planning on doing this, the originally was going to be my... Dream catcher, so I was going to have people comment and post kind of their goals for the new year. So if you feel like you want to do that, you can. If you want to just say, I want to win, you can put that. You could let me know what kind of videos you'd like to see me do in the future. I'd like to know that. Uh, you could just say, Angela, you're awesome, and I like those comments, too. So whatever you feel like doing, there's no, like, the only thing we need to know is just what contest to put you in. So just as long as you let us know if your address is the U.S. contiguous or international, we will be good to go. We can... Pick a winner and only one entry per household, please. So if you do more than one entry, the contest um, 
the contest picker thing will alert me and I will have to disqualify you. Sorry. So even if somebody's asking a question, only comment once. I will answer any questions that you see, even if you know the answer or I say something to you, don't reply back because that will count as a comment. So, Or you can join just comment once. Angela's Facebook group and you can ask questions there. Yes. We can get back to you on that point also. True, true. We have a great Facebook group that uh, if you paint any of my paintings, and I love to see them, so you can share them with me on Facebook there. Or you can tag me on Pinterest or um, Instagram or Twitter. I've got all my social media links down in the description. Follow and Sometimes I have different stuff. Most of the time I post links to my videos and all of those. But I also post other random stuff in Instagram mostly. Pictures of our cat. <laughs> A lot of pictures of the cat. She's always posing for us in weird ways. She makes these little heart shapes with her paws. She thinks she's a diva or something. She does her version of the of this, but she does she curls her paws in like this under her chin. It's so cute. She's the only cat that we have ever had that's done that. <laughs> mm -hmm. She's a mess. She's the one that was trying to get in earlier. Maybe she wants to be on screen. Okay, trying to hurry through here. Fill in this whole thing with black hair. I'm adding extra ruffles along the edge. I don't know if you noticed that, but I'm kind of in the picture. There's a lot of little ruffles. I didn't worry too much about it when I was painting my white, but now I'm kind of cutting in and, and ruffling this edge a little bit. I really like against this black. I don't know. It's just something about the white and black that pulls out those colors that are in the rows. This brush is not wanting to be very careful. It's not sticking together very well for me. I think my black paint, I should have just waited to the very end to put it out because it's dry too. Okay, so hopefully that answered questions. If anybody in the live show has questions right now, you can ask, ask them before we end. And that, I'm sure other people might have the same question, but all the rules are down in the description. And like we said, it starts today as soon as this video is finished processing. I wish the live comments would count, but they don't. They don't save them on YouTube. So, and the random picker thing that we're the program we're using uses comments so it doesn't use the live live chat right and just make, make sure that nobody puts any personal information in yes. the comments no. again it's just the state if you're in the united states or the country and that's all we need we don't want anybody putting their personal full address on there no you know, definitely not if you are selected as a winner you will be contacted by Angela directly. Yes, just make sure that your messages on YouTube are are open for people to, to comment to you so that you, because I know some privacy, there are privacy settings will not allow you to receive messages from people. Um, and so if that's the case, I wouldn't be able to contact you and let you know. So just make sure you maybe check your your privacy settings on YouTube and make sure that you're actually able to be able to receive messages and if I can't get it I, I'll try if if I can see that you have uh, the program that I have will actually let me know if you've got your Facebook uh, link to your YouTube or Facebook or Google Plus and I might be able to try you there too so I'll try a couple different places to get a hold of you do my best but if you I'll need you to reply within 72 hours so that I can know um, if you're still there. <laughs> and so I can ship things out in a speedy 
Anyway, I'm really excited about this. Windsor Newton was very generous to send this stuff. The, the value of the box. Ta-da! We're done. There's our rose. Still feel like it could be a little bit darker in the center there, but I'm not going to mess with it. So. Let's let's move on to Stickman, please. <sighs> Don't worry about the rose. Whatever. <sighs> so demanding. Okay, so it's pretty. I'm just looking at it. I'm trying to see if there's <laughs> anything I need to add or change, but I think I like it. So we did good. Let's move that out of the way. Actually, I need to put it where it's not going to get any paint on anything. Just now that I've got everything set out here, it's harder to... There we go. All right, stick man, he's getting a rose. Yep. All right. There and so everybody know. who's joined us, Stickman is the official mascot. <laughs> Trademark not. <laughs> or a channel. It's just something that I drew, the original one, sometime a year or so ago while we were at a museum. They had a uh, interactive art for children. I'll put a rose up here in his hair. So his I participated antlers. by drawing a Stickman. Yes, he did. And yes. Then uh, Angela. And then he took pictures, proceeded to take pictures with Stickman. Oh, yeah. With he, all of the different major artworks that we were watching. He got his picture taken with Rosie the Riveter. He did. He was pretty proud of that. She didn't She didn't seem very interested in him, though. So. <laughs> all right. So he's got a rose up in his hair there. <laughs> he's got a dream catcher hanging off some birds. He's got the shell bra when the, he did the mermaid show. Yeah, and... Do you, do you need to put a candle also? Oh, I do. Didn't do I just need a candle. Okay. We're just going to draw this out as long as we can. <laughs> Three hours later. Three, yeah, no joke. <laughs> well, I'll do... I guess, okay. I'll just do... Where should I do the candle? I don't even know. Well, I guess you can have a candle sitting up, up here. <laughs> we'll just keep putting stuff up here on his head. On his antlers. Yep, he's got his candle. That looks like a Coke can right now. And that will visit you in your dreams if you don't win the first, second, or third prize. <laughs> no. Nightmares about <laughs> stick man. <laughs> I don't have the right colors for a candle. There we go. You're not prepared, and you're painting off screen too. I'm not painting off screen. I'm right here. Okay, well, what I'm watching right now. Oh, okay, I see you up there now. Okay. Just making sure I'm doing my job here. All right, so he's got a candle. It's a really badly painted candle, and I don't have the right colors, so. That's okay. You're, you're not going to be able to judge me on that. <laughs> this whole thing is like a no-judgment zone. You just have to kind of have fun sometimes. This is our silly. That's right. Our silly uh, artistic expression here, so. We'll try to have fun with it. All right, let me show you the goods. Get all this stuff out of the way and tr make sure that I don't have... May or may not have paint on it when you arrive, when it arrives at your house. <laughs> it does. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> just try to clean that off really good. Breaking it in a little bit. Yeah. And full disclosure, I did test the brushes just to make sure that they worked properly. I wanted to see... No, not really, but I did <laughs> test a couple of the brushes. Not the, not the Cotman, because I've already used the Cotman, but I needed to see how the professional line worked these ones so I tried out a couple of these just to see how they uh, worked with acrylics and I cleaned them out really well so oh yeah sorry zooming out all right oh there we go da, 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 da. so here's the bamboo set this was a hundred and six dollars I think whoops sorry that was loud um value it's got a little palette up here that straps in that you can take out whoop I'm gonna tear it sorry if it's torn on the front that was I just did that so this is a little paint guide it's got different colors that they offer in there this is the professional line that they have 
Windsor and Newton. So you get a white, titanium white, raw umber, burnt sienna, yellow ochre, phthalo green blue shade, ultramarine blue, permanent alizarin crimson, and yellow, azo yellow medium. Are you trying to signal me? Okay. Gloss gel. And a medium kneaded erase rubber putty eraser with a pencil for, I guess, your sketching. There's a little towel thingy. So when you're out and about, you can use that. This would actually make, be a nice like little kit to take to classes. Uh, gloss varnish. So that's really nice. And, but I wouldn't use these brushes for, you'll probably have to get yourself another brush for a varnish because you don't want to use your good brushes for that. And these are too small anyways. And then you get a quarter inch flat and a number four round with it and a palette knife. So a pretty sweet kit. It's pretty nice. So our contiguous U.S. folks uh, can get that. If you win, that's what you'll be getting. I did kind of scrunch up the thing there, sorry. Messed it up a little bit. Oh, I need to put the little cardboard thing back in it too to protect it from rolling around. The second prize is a uh, number 12 and a number four. It's about a half inch and a quarter inch flat. A number two round and a number six filbert. It's about a quarter inch filbert or so. And these are the artist acrylics filbert or uh, artist acrylics professional paint brushes. Um, they're made for acrylics and they're really really nice and I did try them out and they worked pretty well So I did like them a lot and those were worth 50 something dollars And then these are the Cotman ones and I'm leaving these little tubes tips on them. So I'm um, sorry, but this is a liner brush uh, Zero this is the number six round and this is the one inch one stroke flat brush and it's stiff because it's got its sizing still in it. I did not try this one out. This brush alone is worth 30 something dollars and then these two added to it. It was a, it was a little bit underneath the pr price for the four professional brushes. So so pretty pretty cool kit. Mm -hmm. So first, second, and third prizes there and the, the brush sets are for anywhere in the world. So mm -hmm. anywhere you live and <clears throat> we will start that as soon as we're over here and I thank you guys for watching so much today hope you've enjoyed the rose painting and you try it share it with me on my thankful art page and good luck in the contest we will see you next Tuesday we'll have another show and then on the following Saturday when we do the hot air balloon show we will be picking our winner so thanks guys we'll see you next time bye